today we are going to be talking about this instrument here. Now the reason why we're talking about it, and the reason why I'm creating the second, uh, the second video about this particular instrument, is because I was reading online a rather vociferous argument about what this instrument is called. Now those of us who uh, have several brain cells will know that this is a soprano trombone. But the other side of the argument is that some people are calling this a slide trumpet. The short answer to this is that this is not a slide trumpet. This is a soprano trombone. The slightly longer answer that I'm going to give will explain why this is a soprano trombone and why this isn't a slide trumpet. I've created a number of videos which I'm going to link to that uh, show all the members of the trombone and trumpet families that I personally own. Now the video showing the trumpet families is going to be in this part if you click on this general area of this video and the video demonstrating the various members of the trombone family is going to be in this general area. So I'm not going to go through the different trombone families, different trumpet families in much detail here but I just want to introduce you just to a couple of quick members of each. Firstly, this is my tenor trombone. It's uh, just a standard basic tenor trombone. Key things to note about this is the shape. The, the, you put your mouth here, you, the sound goes down there, through there, joins to this part of the instrument at a 90, approximately a 90 degree angle between there and there, and uh, continues on its merry way up around here and out the bell. That's what exists with the arrangement of a tenor trombone. With an alto trombone, we have a very similar configuration. The mouthpiece appears uh, in the middle of the instrument, the sound goes down a slide, reverses on itself, joins the bell section again at a roughly a 90 degree angle, and then it continues on its way through this bend and out through the bell. If we take a look at the smallest member of the trombone family, the piccolo trombone, we see a very similar concept. The shape is still the same. The lead pipe goes down here, reverses on itself, joins with the bell section again at a 90 degree angle, and then continues on its way around this bend and out through the bell flare. And it is therefore in keeping with those principles that this instrument, the soprano trombone, is therefore a member of the trombone family. Uh, the air is blown down this way, the slide reverses on itself, joins with the bell section again at a 90 degree angle, continues on its way uh, through another bend, and then the sound is projected out the bell. So now let's briefly take a look at the trumpet family. This is the B-flat trumpet, the one that most people will be familiar with. Now to explain the principles of this trumpet, I'm going to go to something a little bit more simple. This trumpet. This trumpet doesn't have any of the complications of valves or anything like that, but it does have the two principles that identify a trumpet. Firstly, the mouthpiece is at this end. There is nothing that protrudes beyond the mouthpiece on this instrument. Secondly, the bell is at this end. There is no part of the instrument that protrudes beyond the bell section. One end of the instrument is the bell. One end of the instrument is the mouthpiece. Everything else happens in between that. Quite different from a trombone. So we have a B-flat trumpet, a C trumpet, an E-flat trumpet a piccolo trumpet. Now this trumpet is quite a lot different from the previous three that I've shown you in that it has a fourth valve, it has the, most of the tuning slides on this side of the instrument, but it keeps within the same principles that define all the rest of the trumpet family. The bell is right at this end, the mouthpiece is right at this end. And even as we progress down to the most obscure member of the trumpet family I have, the bass trumpet, even though this particular example is played on its side as opposed to played on its top, and although it's a lot longer and a lot bigger, it still keeps within the same principles that identify the trumpet family. The mouthpiece protrudes from this end, the bell protrudes from the opposite end. And if we return finally to the soprano trombone, we can see quite clearly that the mouthpiece doesn't protrude from this end, and the bell doesn't protrude from this end. The end of the slide section 
and the end of the bell section are the components that define the length of this instrument. Therefore, it is incorrect to call this instrument a slide trumpet. However, I will just briefly touch on why it is sometimes called a slide trumpet. The first reason is that these mouthpieces are interchangeable. The second reason is that they sound somewhat similar. But despite sounding similar, the soprano trombone is not a member of the trumpet family. On a soprano trombone, you can't do this. And on a trumpet, you can't do this. So hopefully this video has served to identify what this instrument is called and where it sits as a member of the trombone family. Finally, I wish to show you some images of actual slide trumpets. Yes, the slide trumpet is actually a real instrument, just not what you thought it was. These Baroque style slide trumpets are in keeping with the definition of a trumpet which I've discussed in this video, yet they also have a slide. It's not the same sort of slide that you'd see in a trombone, but more of a very long tuning slide. Now this tuning slide extends the mouthpiece further away from the body of the instrument. It's not a fully chromatic slide, it's more intended as an adjustment to tuning. This image shows this particular example with its slide all the way in. This image shows the trumpet with its slide completely removed. And this image shows what this particular instrument looks like when it is being played.